All right, guys, welcome back to the next part in our Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we went ahead and created our RM request object, which basically models a API request to the Rick and Morty API. So now that we've got that situated, we also went to the service and we talked very briefly about adding this expecting type thing here, which is a generic. We're gonna actually now in this video attempt to get this request service thing working so we can actually start making API calls. So before jumping into things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, you guys know the drill and let's continue building. So the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and actually do here is uh, we want to translate this request to a URL request. So let's actually create a function down here and we're gonna have some private utilities in here. So I'm gonna add a mark here for private and we're gonna go ahead and say uh, request from request. And what this is gonna go ahead and do is take in a RM request and return to us a URL request. So it's pretty simple to create a URL request. We'll just go ahead and say, let's make this an RM request like so. We're gonna go ahead and create a URL request and you can create this with a URL. So we already know we can grab a URL off of here. So what I'll go ahead and do is, I will say guard let URL is RM request URL. And if we don't have it for some reason, we're gonna return nil and we're gonna make this function uh, nullable like so. And now that we've got a URL, we can actually create this URL request and we are going to want to return that request. Now in the middle here, we are gonna to want to go ahead and do a couple of things. And what those things are is say request dot, the HTTP method will be RM request dot http method and actually that's the only thing we need to do we actually did quite a bit of work inside the rm request itself which allows us to circumvent some of that work so if you recall what we did in here is we already took care of the logic of adding url query items path components and all of that good stuff that we want to do in here so that all being said, one thing that I did forget to mention in the last video is let's actually convert this set back to an array because we do want path components to be ordered. So we could optionally use a NS ordered set, but instead of getting kind of complex into all that jazz, what I'm gonna do is just stick with using a array and not over optimizing as we get started with our application here. So now that we can actually translate a RM request from a, uh, rather create a URL request from an RM request, we can actually start working with it now. So here we're gonna say request, let's, we're gonna say uh, URL request will be a self dot request from request. Now this is gonna give us a optional back because that's what, what we actually specified this function to do. So we're gonna say guard let URL request. Otherwise we're gonna return and we wanna make sure we handle this. So in this case, if we failed to create a URL request, we're gonna pass back a failure and we want perhaps some uh, custom errors in here. And the way we can do that is by saying we have an enum in here, which is a RM service error, service error. And it's going to extend an error. We're gonna have a couple cases in here. So we'll go ahead and say case, this error will actually go ahead and be failed to create request. And what we can actually do in here is pass this back. So we'll say failed to create requests like that. Now, once we do have a request, we actually want to send it off. So we're going to create a task and this will be off of URL session shared. And we're going to say data task with a particular request and a completion handler. So request we can pass on in and make sure this is URL request. And in our callback, we'll have data, a response, and a error. And actually we don't really care about this response. So what we're gonna do instead is say data, underscore, and a error like so. First and foremost, we're gonna make sure that we have some data. So if we have data and our error is in fact nil, we can continue 
Otherwise, we want to pass back once again a failure with an appropriate error. So we may or may not have an error here. So what we're going to go ahead and pass back is one of two things. So we're going to say failed to get data, which will be the new error type here. And we'll go ahead and say here rm service error dot fail to get data. And we're only going to use this if the error that we have in the callback is in fact nil. So pass back the error that the URL session gave us. And if it's nil, pass this guy back. And we also forgot the else keyword there. So don't forget to toss that in as well. We have a warning that's telling us that, hey, we need to actually use this data thing. So the next thing we want to actually do in here is decode the response to a particular either object, a model, or just raw JSON. So we're going to start by decoding it to JSON just so we can print it in our console down here and actually see what we're getting back from the API. So the way I'm going to go ahead and do that is I'm going to say let JSON is try JSON serialization and try to go ahead and get a JSON object with this data and we're going to pass in some options we're going to say go ahead and see what options we have in here so we're going to say fragments allowed and actually we can actually omit options altogether and i believe we should be good to go and i want to say print string describing the json if an error is thrown somewhere in here hence the try key we're going to catch it in here and we are actually going to just bubble it up via the completion handler like so and we're not going to call the success case here quite yet because we do actually need to decode this to the type that the caller is expecting that we pass in here. Right now, we're just decoding it to a string dictionary representation and just printing it out here so we can actually see a response. So now that we've got all of this good to go, don't forget to say tasks.resume, which actually kicks off this, uh, this task here for our URL session. So let's jump into the character view controller and give this a go and see if it works. So we do have a request here already. We're going to omit this query parameter. Actually, we'll actually leave this here because I do recall we grabbed this directly from the API and it does work. So here we do want to say expecting something. I'm just going to leave that as is. And inside of the callback, I'm going to switch on the result we get. And if we get the success, I will ignore this and just break. And if we get a failure, I am going to print out a string describing that failure. The reason I'm breaking in the success case is because we really just care about seeing the print statement in the console down here. So that was a lot of talking. So let me pause this app that we've got running and just build and run it again. And we should see some JSON down here, which in fact we do. We get a whole lot of JSON down here. And this is particularly for this request here, it appears, where we pass in characters and we want to get a particular character back. And it looks like we get this whole monstrosity here. And it looks like we actually get a few different results. So I'm not going to go into the results themselves, but I am going to start cleaning up our API so we can, in fact, decode and deserialize the proper object. So let's jump back into our view controller and I am going to delete the code here. So let's get rid of all this stuff and we're going to jump to our service again. Now, instead of just serializing or decoding to a standard JSON object, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we will delete this. We're going to say try JSON decoder and decode a particular type. And this is going to be the type that we are expecting. So we have a type here. So we should be able to say type.self from the data. So essentially, decode whatever the parameterized type was with the given input data. And once we have that, we can actually say completion success. And I'm going to go ahead and call this result. And we'll pass that result back. So it is up to the caller to pass back a appropriate model to which the response of an API request can actually be decoded. So let's go ahead and do one example so we can actually make sure that this whole thing is working. And the example that I am going to work with is basically getting a list of characters. 
So cool, so this is the API that we want to go ahead and hit, where basically we just have character as the endpoint. And one cool thing that I wanna run by everyone is this notion of convenience, uh, cre convenient creation of objects. So we would need to create this RM request and pass things in directly, but we can actually do something kind of cool. So in this RM request at the bottom here, I'm gonna use extension here to go ahead and create some requests that we can use more uh, simply in our code. So we're gonna say static let, uh, let's see, list characters, which will be a type of request. So list characters request, I guess is what I'll call it. And this will be an RM request where the endpoint is simply characters. And the beauty of this is that it improves readability if we jump into our view controller. We can go ahead and say rm service shared execute this request. And we expect some type back. I'm just going to say uh, string.self for the time being. And we have our callback here with our results. Once again, we're going to switch on the result. And actually, Xcode gives you this nice autocomplete here. This will be whatever model we get back, and this will be our failure. I'm gonna actually change it to an error, and we'll just print this out, and respectively, we'll print out the model here. So cool, so now that we've got this actually working and our code written out here, just ignore that it's uh, yelling at me because I forgot to wrap this in a print. Like, so let me do that for this here. What we want to do is create a model that matches the response that we expect from here. So similar to what we did with our uh, particular characters, I'm gonna go ahead and simply copy and paste this whole thing, and we're gonna create a model that will represent what this is. And not to worry, it looks kind of big, but we're gonna be able to do it very quickly, and I'll show you in a moment why that is. So before I create a new file, we do have a few models going on now in the model folder. So let's start organizing this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder and toss these all in there. So new group with uh, folder, rather from selection, I should say. And these are going to be our uh, types. So we'll call those data types. And we are going to create a new folder in here as well. And here we'll, we're going to say response types. I'll call this API response types to be more specific. And let's go ahead and create a new Swift file in here. And this is going to be... Uh, get characters response and again we're going to prefix it rm the reason i named it that is because this basically just says you know get all characters maybe i'll just call it get all characters response so let's say get all characters response dot swift create it and let's create a struct with the same name struct can i autocomplete with it let's see if i can uh, struct rm get all characters response It'll be codable, and we want to toss in basically a structure that matches this. So let me go ahead and let's see what this looks like. So off the bat, we have this info thing here. So we're going to want info in here. It's going to be uh, a, a object, which I'll go ahead and call a rm get uh, all characters response info, like so. The other thing you can do is actually you can stick a struct directly in here as well. So we could actually say info is just info. It's a little subjective how you want to go ahead and design it. Um, but I will go ahead and make sure that this is also codable. And let's put the stuff that we see down here on there. So this has things like count, which is an integer. This has pages. It also has a next URL, and this is for uh, unlimited scrolling, aka pagination, which we'll talk about in a latter video. And this also has a previous, so it has prev. And both of these are indeed nullable, is my guess, because eventually once we get to page 32, meaning we get to the last page of results, we're not gonna have a next URL. So I'll briefly describe here. So the notion of paging is that the API will give us only 20 results back at a time. We can't get all, you know, several hundred results. And by doing so, we can, you know, load in more data as the user scrolls down in the app. So you can imagine if we have characters here and you start scrolling down, we want to start loading 20 more when they get to the bottom and then show them. And over and over, you know, you can, you can go ahead and uh, play with it as you will. Once you get to the bottom, there's nothing more to load. So cool. So info is info. Now, the other thing we have here is results. 
So if you look at results, it's an array, and I know that by the square bracket, and these things in here look awfully familiar. And the reason they look familiar is because this is nothing more than what we already created, which is a RM character. And that's actually all we need to do, unless I made a mistake somewhere here. So let's actually delete this and see if we can get this back. So we created this by looking at the response here in the API. We already have a convenience for the request. And let's kick this off. This is what we expect to get from a get all characters API call. So we'll jump into here. We're gonna say we expect to get this type back. And down here, we should get the model which represents uh, the response that we see on the JSON in the browser. So I'll give it a build and run. And we get a huge dumped object here, which is awesome. We definitely do have our response here. We can see the info here, and here is a collection of results. So let's print out something a little more reasonable. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's print out a few things. We're gonna print out, let's print out the total, which will be model dot, and it has a info, and then on this info has a count. Let's also print out uh, the results. So page result count will be model.results.count. And we'll go ahead and give this a run and it's yelling at me because this thing here is an integer. So I will convert it to a string. Similarly, this thing here is also an integer and we'll convert it to a string before we actually go ahead and give it a run. So we get 826 characters back and we get 20 results in this result collection, meaning if you do a little quick math there, that's roughly 42 pages, if I'm not mistaken. And actually, I even think it tells you how many pages it has. So there is, uh, on the info, there is pages. So if I go ahead and give this a run, if my math was correct, we have 42 pages of results, meaning if we start scrolling down, we should see 42 different you know, spinners at the bottom. Admittedly, we're gonna build it so it loads things in quickly, but I digress. We're gonna tackle unlimited scroll as well because this is not 2010 and we don't wanna have the user tap a load more button. So I will leave the video there. So congrats to you, you're finally loading data from this API and of course, we're in our view controller at the moment, and we don't really want, want to do that. What we want to do is we want to move a lot of this logic to a view model and actually build a view because our app is a little plain at the moment. Um, and we're going to make sure that everything looks really nice in both light mode and dark mode. If you're not familiar, you can hit Command Shift A in the simulator and see light mode and dark mode. I actually prefer building in dark mode myself, uh, but I digress. So. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're new here and into iOS. Leave a comment if you have any questions or ran into any trouble uh, or for the YouTube algorithm. Share the video, share the series. Appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next one.